mix reactions trail for a government's announcement regarding the new price of natural gas for power generation companies, which indicates a significant hike and has got people talking. Today on the show, we'll take a close look at the pros and cons of this move. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The federal government on Monday announced that the new price of natural gas for power generation companies is now $2.42 per metric million British thermal unit, higher than the previous rate of $2.18 per MMBTU. The Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, pegged the cost of commercial gas at $2.92 per MMBTU, up from the previous cost of $2.05 per MMBTU. The announcement was signed by the Chief Executive, NMDPRA, Farouk Ahmed. Recall that the multi-year tariff order released by NEC in January 2024 for the electricity distribution companies was calculated based on the previous price of natural gas. Gas producers, including international and domestic oil and gas companies, have repeatedly called for the upward view in the price of the product, stressing that this would be an incentive to ramp up production. In the announcement on Monday, Ahmed said the Petroleum Industry Act 2021, assented to by the President on August 16, 2021, and gazetted in August 2021, provided a clear regulatory framework for the determination of a market-based pricing regime for the domestic gas market. The NMDPRA boss further stated that the latest action was taken in line with Section 164, the third and fourth schedule of the PIA 2021, which mandated the regulator to determine the domestic-based price and the marketable wholesale price of natural gas supplied to the strategic sectors. He said, quote, the DBP at the marketable gas deliverable delivery point under sector 1671 and other provisions of the PIA shall be determined based on regulations which incorporate among such other matters the following principles. The price must be of a level to bring forward sufficient natural gas supplies for the domestic market on a voluntary basis for the upstream producers. On a voluntary basis by the upstream producers. B. The price shall not be higher than the average of similar natural gas prices in major emerging countries that are significant producers of natural gas. C. Lowest cost of gas supply on three-tier cost of supply framework. D. Market-related prices tied to international benchmark. Unquote. The NMDPRA therefore emphasized that it had set the quote 2024 domestic base price at $2.42 per MMBTU and wholesale prices for natural gas in strategic sectors, following consultations with stakeholders and, the compli and in compliance with the PIA and gas pricing regulations." Unquote. Joining us is a public affairs analyst, wisdom chap Jumbo, and a power systems engineer 
who is also a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Power Engineers, Dr. Idowu Oyebanjo. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you, Bob. Okay, let's start from the studio. Uh, how would you want to kickstart this conversation? Okay. From the recent development relative to the review of the of the MMBTU uh, pricing of gas to the reflections that the power distribution companies are now incorporating into their tariff uh, tariff systems across uh, a defined band of of their customers. That would you want to kickstart this? Yeah, th thanks, Bola. I, I think um, since the announcement by the um, regulator, uh, I think it has hit everyone with uh, different mixed feelings. Um, um, some people have been in shock, if I would say, about the, the increase. But uh, you must realize that uh, maybe some of us saw this coming. Um, of course, uh, gas, our, our, our power takes uh, I mean, needs more than 75% of it needs gas uh, to work. So we, we see this coming at the end of the day. But I think the major problem which Nigerians have uh, is especially those who are willing to pay, uh, who are in the band A. Uh, like the regulator said, uh, this new tariff will reflect only on customers within the band A. So what, what does that mean? Band A means that if you're in the band A, you receive at least minimum of 20, 20 hours of power in a day. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, that many people will say, oh, how do I even come into this because I don't even see the 20 hours of power a day. But we saw this coming and uh, the only issue or concern we have here is if we pay this new tariff, are we really going to see the power? That is the main concern. Dr. Yebanjo. Uh, as controversial as the issue of tariff hike may be, uh, the, the necessary question is, is this the silver bullet that, that will bring about consistent power supply by the Nigerian electricity architecture, factoring in the fact that the power generation entities are different from the transmission entity. The transmission entity is different from the distribution entities. So is this the silver bullet to kill the Leviathan of darkness in Nigeria? Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, to go straight to answer that question, uh, no. So, of course, increasing tariffs is a short-term uh, situation. Hopefully, when we get to a situation whereby the tariffs will now go down. But the main thing that can help Nigeria now in terms of uninterrupted power supply or increase in quantum of power supply to businesses, homes, to offices, to industries, residential consumers, commercial and industrial consumers, will be the full implementation of the Electricity Act 2023 as amended, which was signed into law last year. And uh, the decentralization of the power system, such that we have states having their electricity market, regional markets will exist, and then the national market will take care of those states who are unable to start their uh, market. This will bring renewable energy systems, it will bring private sector investments, and also investments from the federal government. 
all of this will work together to give us a silver bullet, as you put it, that we uh, help us to have a consistency or improvement in power supply. Having said that, the discussion you have raised in your introduction, very, very lovely. You talked about increases in price of one of the very important commodity, gas, for the power sector. So as a result, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has had to increase tariffs. But for band A, this has pros and cons as you have mentioned it. So we have to also deliberate on the, the cons, the disadvantages, and what needs to be done to mitigate them. Thank you. I thank you very much, Doc. Um, I'm sitting here as a Nigerian who has seen over the decades I've lived in this country a continual deterioration of the quality of power supply. And like the good doctor just stated now, we may just be dealing with eczema, talking around this, talking around this price uh, tariff hike, when we may seem to be leaving the skin cancer yet to be attended to. Because it is obvious that this tariff hike will not be the final solution. The doctor made some suggestions consistent with what the Electricity Act 2023 enunciates. But I'm sitting here now that I don't see the sensitization. Would they still, indeed, even the doctor spoke around state governments galvanizing yeah. There are local markets in their state for power generation, transmission, and distribution, which has been decentralized. But I am one who believes that with proper sensitization, and this is the question for you, with proper sensitization, mm -hmm. you and I can form cooperatives. We can have private concerns. We can have people who live in estates, in the estate that I'm going to be sleeping in today, almost 90% of us, almost 90% of us function on solar. Minimum of 5 kVA solar. And it's even ironic that we may be wasting power because sometimes we generate more than we need, but because we function in silos, power that could be accumulated and indeed, for, for us to get some recompense, as, we, as, as is done in some other advanced power markets, yes. where you generate independent power, mm -hmm. you pass on the national grid, they calculate what you have used, deduct it from what you have supplied, mm. and sometimes give you... So I'm sitting here thinking, are we even going in the right direction? Because I don't see that sensitization mm. from, from enlightened people like you, from the media, from professionals like like doctor, we are still talking the government. The, you know, government. I, I think that's a good observation, really, and, and, and I really must agree with you. But however, um, yes, we're, we are looking at the government because I think in this conversation, the government needs to take a lead in it, in this conversation of sensitization. Though there have been many com talks uh, everywhere, many programs, you know, many, just like this, raising the issue of power and the issues around it. Now, that's why the, the Electricity Act of 2023 solves this problem a lot, giving the power to states, you know. And like Doctor said, when we begin to decentralize, you know, and, you know, begin to implement this act, mm -hmm. we start solving this problem because states will begin to drive a lot of these conversations. That's what the act is empowering them to do. Drive this conversation, drive the policies. So far, so good now. About four, how many states now 
uh, just a few states have been able to create their own markets and create their own policies. No, they have only domesticated the law. Yes. You know, yes. That, that's not creating market. <laughs> that's, that's one way. They've created the policies to create the market. Maybe doctor will speak more on that. But what I want to say is this is where the, gov the state government will also take lead. And this is where also the regulator, which is NEC, will also take the, you know, through the government and go take the lead on it. We need to keep talking. The issue of power affects everybody. The issue of power, it's, it's a problem to everybody. It's been more than 60 years. We have been struggling to fix the issue of power. So we keep these conversations going. But yes, we may think we're looking onto government, but government must take the lead on this. We must see them also trying to, you know, take that sensation down to the home. We have the Nigeria Orientation Agency that is also there. What are they doing? What are the conversations they are having, you know, as, as regards this? This is my own thinking. But yeah, we need to keep, keep pushing. And we, we, are, we are making a good progress so far. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that may sound very controversial to some of the people watching you at home. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jumbo. Uh, uh, Doc. Doc. Dr. Oyebanjo. Yes, I'm with you. To the best of I'm my understanding. You. you are making very good points. I'm really enjoying both of you. To, to the best of my understanding, Doctor. Oh, thank you very much. To the best of my understanding, there is another segment of this, of this show that I have rested for a while now. To the best of my understanding, we are building on an infrastructure that was conceptualized in 18... conceptualized and delivered in 1863. A central national... a central grid. And I'm sitting here now knowing that people like yourself do not only practice in Nigeria, you literally, you literally function across the world. We, we, were, we were once positing that it was the statute that was, that was choking, that was essentially the primary problem of, of the system. Now we have a statute that allows for organic federalism in power, in power generation, distribution, uh, transmission and distribution. Doctor, using your working knowledge of the industry, if you were talking to the Honorable Minister today, say he's sitting in front of you, what would be your suggestions? Methodically. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the Honorable Minister of Power is already uh, doing a lot of advocacy and making sure that uh, the import of the Electricity Act filters down through the system. Uh, immediately he resumed office, he has been able to organize a three-day retreat where he brought together all stakeholders relevant to the power sector and to brainstorm on what needs to be done. So I am aware that a communique will be issued shortly uh, about that. He has also communicated with state governors. He has spoken with all the uh, honorable commissioners for energy or power or, or related services in every state, trying to galvanize uh, 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 the momentum. You see, just as you have said, as well as uh, uh, the analyst Jumbo, you are correct. There is need for the media as well as uh, CSOs and various organizations, professional bodies, they should be at the vanguard of this uh, message of Electricity Act. Like you took us back in history, the Nigerian power sector followed the development in the world. When America started, Europe, as well as uh, Britain. However, once they started developing and making progress, we did not make significant progress. In fact, I will say that for a country of 200 million plus, trying to, uh, to use 3,500 megawatts is absurd. Utterly it, is in the 1920s, it is in the 1920s situation of the UK or the US, which is not good, because they ramped up from those small levels 
and then move significantly to about 65,000 uh, megawatt of demand today in the UK and generation capacity of upwards of 70,000. So for Nigeria today, where we need to be, we need to have about 40,000 megawatts of generation, 35,000 megawatts of transmission capacity, wheeling capacity, and then 30,000 megawatts of demand based on the studies that I have done. Now, we are not there. We are even far from there. So the fastest way, the fastest way, the fastest way, I have repeated it three times, to make Nigeria get industrialized is through the decentralization. I speak as a professional. So when I speak on power systems, having done it as my BSc, my MSc, and PhD, and having worked for over 25 years, having worked a significant period of this inside a UK power system that worked, when I'm saying these things, it is not a fast, it is not as a result of uh, uh, conjectures. You have to decentralize this kind of network. It's not that it is too massive. It is a small network compared to other networks. But because of the factors, Nigerian factors, that have affected us over the last 60 years, the most logical thing for Nigeria and the most correct solution for Nigeria is this decentralization. What we are doing, for example, as part of our advocacy in uh, uh, Aid Fund Power Con uh, Consultants Limited, we are approaching the state government, we are helping them, we are sensitizing them, just as you have said, to at least domesticate the law. We are working them through the steps required to not only domesticate the law, prepare the bill, and pass the bill, and then get the right people in the, in, in the, in the electro, electro, electricity commission for the state, and then develop the market that will make consumers be happy. If a power system does not make consumers happy, if a power system brings apprehension, if a power system brings anger, it is not a power system that is functional. Thank you very much. Uh, we need to move from my, my take now. We have built a culture of recriminations mm -hmm. in the power sector. Everybody finger pointing at the other person. But given contemporary developments in, in the power industry worldwide, the fact that China has helped to crash the price of, say, solar, solar panels, the fact that there are alternative energy solutions out there Beyond even solar, many in the southwest. I have a friend who just returned from the UK, and at the last count, in the southwest of Nigeria alone, about 200 plus bodies of water that could be used to generate hydropower at the very local community level to some even as far as states original state original levels and i'm sitting here power is one of the reasons why sometimes some doubt the fact that we we negro negroid species of the homo sapiens whether we are really whether we are really human beings because we always have the issue of power in all the places that we we habitate. Yes. And the irony is that I never knew the man that even once worked in the UK. The irony is that I lived in the UK for more than two decades. And I know that in a place in Northern England, mm -hmm. one of the few places where they are generating more than 12 megawatts of solar energy, the the person that coordinated it was a Nigerian engineer. Mm. We do it when we are in England, and yet there's something about us that gets us to be moribund when we are told. Are we? 
I, 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 will, I will tell you for I will tell you something. Uh, in the last four years, I mean, I've been within the solar um, solar space. Um, energy asset space and all of that off grid, and I can tell you, Nigerians are really brilliant. I've seen quite a lot of technologies, a lot of innovation, especially from young people. Um, I spoke to a guy one time. He had created some tiles, some tile-like thing where I mean, if you step on it, it could generate power. So if you put it in a shopping mall, as in kinetic yes, energy, yes, footfalls, yes, footfalls so will be If we have it in our shopping malls, where very busy. When people walk when around, people, I mean, it, power gen it generates power. So the innovations are there, you know, and, and young people are driving this. So I think one of the issues most times they've suffered is the right kind of funding, you know, to support them. And this again goes back to Electricity Act. Uh, there's a section of that act that was dedicated to, the, to renewable energy, you know, where it, it, that act has given, for example, NEC the power to promote, you know, renewable energy sources as part of our power mix or energy mix in the country. We need to leverage more on that. So one big issue is funding. You meet a young chap now who has created something uh, very innovative, but the issue is struggling with funding. Or maybe, so some companies are already supporting them, but we need more support in that area to fix our power issue. So what we need to do going forward now, uh, as we plan to solve this problem of power, is to support what we have now with some renewable energy sources or some uh, alternative sources. Like I said, there are a lot of them. And we need to constantly promote that. We want to see from all angles the right kind of funding available for them, you know, to be able to fund some of these projects. To be amazed, there's a lot. If I begin to talk about them, I'm not sure we'll go to. There's a lot I have come across. You know, but again, for the sources like solar, we need to even make it more accessible to more people. We need to make... We, some communities, you know, you go there, all you need is a mini grid to power them. And I've been to a lot of those communities, especially down south. You know, I went to a community called the Beke in River State, and they've never had power all their life. But there's a mini grid there, which was installed some couple of years back, and that is what the community is leveraging on. You know, and now with the new act, we, we see that it is promoting and supporting some of these, you know, additional sources. We need to give that. That's why when the state government begin to drive this themselves. Some of these communities, we want to see them use solar or, or, or all these other renewable resources to drive them. Let me... So, let me, yeah, the, the, the innovations are there. Let me compliment... <laughs> uh, let, let, let me uh, briefly collaborate... Yes. Or cor sorry, corroborate what you say. Yeah. I was once in a hotel in Abuja, mm. and, is it, uh, and uh, as it is my wont, I always like to do a stretch of my leg, you know, especially after having been airborne. Yes. So I decided to walk five kilometers. Mm. And I was shocked that in Abuja, who says on seven, there was a body of water. It was not a rainy day. Mm -hmm. There was a body of gushing water. And I was telling myself that, you know what? The, the hotel was burning diesel mm. and look but you see in nigeria there is one agency that is in charge of bodies of water with some people some bureaucrats who are still looking at the back of a file that was last signed <laughs> in the 1960s you know it's ironic <laughs> and so one is um, Doctor Doctor Edewo Ebanji, I think it's about time I came to you. You know why I need to come to you at this juncture, because I can imagine the degree of frustration somebody like you will be feeling sometimes, having been exposed to best practices. It's not the most power generation and distribution de developed markets in the world, and yet when you are back in your in your natal an ancestral home. We are where we are. Sometimes, how do you cope? It's, it sometimes can lead somebody in the direction of seeing, uh, seeing uh, you know, going on the psycho uh, psychologist, uh, you know, the chair. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, one of the one of the most important things for power systems engineer like myself, is that we have been trained to solve complex problems. So whenever we see complex problems, we know how to tackle them.
if we are given the right environment, our environment has to be one that is conducive for us to, to provide the, the services. That's, that's the way we are trained, to look at problems and solve them. Having said that, from what you two have said this evening, it's clear that the federal government made the good decision, the correct decision, to decentralize the system. Because as you have said, there are various sources of energy per state. This will happen once you decentralize. The state is in charge. The people in the state, investors will come in if the environment is made right by the state government. Investors are ready to partner with that kind of young person that uh, Wisdom talk, spoke about a, a while ago. They, we have various resources. In the northern part of the country, you have hydro, you have solar, you have even gas, maybe. So you will use this energy to provide electricity. In the southeast, you see, you saw what happened in uh, February, uh, March also. Uh, from February 26th, it was launched in Abba, Abia State, in a, a, an integrated power plant project by Geometric. You saw the IPP at Abba. And this will serve a, a franchise area in Aba. And look at, people are now moving to Aba. Industries are now relocating to Aba. From outside Nigeria, they are going there. They have started, from what we hear, to enjoy uninterrupted power supply. So many states will do the IPP once you decentralize properly. Once you make sure we decentralize, these things will happen. The solar you talk about, you will sell your solar to the grid. It's already written in the act. If all of you in your estate generate so much of electricity. We call you prosumer. A prosumer is a person that is both producing electricity and consuming it. So you are a prosumer in your estate. If all of you aggregate this electricity, you can even as individuals sell to the grid. This will happen. It will happen when you decentralize. Then when we go and support the government of the state, one after the other, to say, look, this is the implication of the act. This is what you need to do. And once the citizens continue to engage their their government, state government, this will happen. On the matter of uh, river, uh, uh, IPPs, this will spring up in Nigeria once we decentralize. But currently, what the federal government is doing is a uh, light up Nigeria program. So if you, if you remember in October 2023, there was a light up Agbara project by the renewed hope agenda of uh, President Tinubu. But this is being anchored under the office of uh, the vice president. It was launched there. And with NDPAC, FGM Power Company of Nigeria Limited, as well as NRX1 and other uh, private investors, they are going to be involved in providing electricity to industrial clusters. In February, also on the 26th of February this year, the vice president went to uh, Enugu in what we call the Light Up Southeast uh, project. This one aims to also take the industrial clusters of, uh, of, of uh, in, in, in the southeast and make them viable and make them to be able to have electricity that can make them have competitive manufacturing capacities. So power is an enabler. Without power, there will be no economic development. Look, there is no country in the world that you see that has developed and we like to go on holidays there or we make them a reference that didn't start by building a power system. When we are doing power system 101, the lecture says the first thing a government does is to build a power system. And that's talk with me. The first thing you will do, if you have a piece of land and you want to form a government here, yeah, the first thing you should do is a power system. I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound as though I'm a cleric, but even one of the great books and one of the good books tells us that the first thing that the creator did was let, let there be light. <laughs> and I wonder why we have, uh, we have decided to live this long in relative, in relative darkness. I'll come back to you, Doc, uh, before we wrap up. We are where we are now. We are trading on ideas. Yes. Uh, but I'm feeling, sitting down here, I'm feeling that 
it is, it is incumbent more on people like myself, uh, people like yourself in the, like I say, the Chatarati, the Chatarati uh, uh, stratum or class of society, yeah. uh, people like doctors who have seen it work mm. in places where, you know, it's been demystified, is now incumbent on us to find a synergy like this program is providing to enlighten an average Nigerian watching that there is nothing mysterious about having consistent light. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I, and, and that's why I like, for the, I, I like what I see in the last few days all over the media. Uh, there has been constant conversation around these issues. I mean, um, I ran a program for nearly four years, you know, trying to let people understand that, okay, this isn't working. You can have this alternative and it is possible and it will work. Because there are so many, so many uh, uh, um, um, uh, info misinformation out there, you know. Some people say, oh, for example, solar is expensive um, uh, and they have never gone to price one before. You understand? So we need to, that's why the media... Mm -hmm. the, the Even if it's, I, I'm, going, I'm going to where I will sleep tonight, I, know, I have no anxiety about power because I know there will be power. Yes. Even if it's expensive so, up front. Yes, yes. So oh, we, we, we need to constantly, that's why the media plays a key role. We need to constantly talk about these things. We don't know, as even as we're having this program now, we may have just you know, pass a very important information to somebody today. And I, and I noticed this over the last you know, couple of years I have been doing this myself. You know, people will call and you let them know. You'll be shocked that, you know, there's just so many mis misinformation there. And when you are able to inform them properly, you understand that changes a lot for them. Having power 24 hours is not a mystery. It, it should, it's a basic amenity. It's a basic thing that should happen. If you go to Ghana, I lived in Ghana for five years plus. We never, in fact, if they would take the light, they're going to call you. You're going to see notification. Ghana, ha if Ghana can do it, why are we struggling with this? So the media plays a key role in this and we, we shouldn't get tired. We need to keep talking and talking and talking and passing that information. And that's what, that's my take on that. Dr. Idowo Yebanji, we need to be coasting home now and I would want to enjoin you to have a direct conversation with people at home and just let them know that from the micro, in fact, from the nano to the micro to the medium level, there may be a lot, there may be just a lot that people can do from Powering or lighting up their rooms, to lighting up their, say, homestead, to lighting up their, say, neighborhood, if they function in a very collaborative community. You want to be talking to those ones because our professionals like you almost end up having to talk to governments. You know, ministers, governors, but at the end of the day, I, the paradox of the past situation in Nigeria, since I've been born and I've been uh, conscious, is that people solve that problem more for themselves than from a central, a central utility. How would you want to wrap it up, sir? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it has been a very uh, important. Uh, discussions and I've learned a lot from the contributions that you both have made uh, Gola, as well as wisdom uh, I will say that as enunciated before now let uh, citizens take interest in the matter of uh, power system it's not easy even in the UK even the US citizens don't really have time to understand what is uh, power what is the my bill some people don't even know where they are on and what band they are and things like that because it's something that they expect to get and rightly so so one thing that we must do is to decentralize i have said that a number of times when the electricity markets in the states are set up meritocracy must be one of the most important things that will function without a system of meritocracy without celebrating meritocracy over mediocrity you can never have a power system. Having said that, 
Collaboration is important. The state government will create an enabling environment for private investors. Private investors will work with the existing discos by doing the franchising model, by building in the integrated power plant project. It can even be 10 megawatt solar. It can even be 5 megawatt. It can be as 20 megawatt. We need all of these pockets of generation, distributed generation, we call them. We need them to be able to make power available first in the state. Any excess can be sent to the regional grid. Any excess can be sent to the national grid. And that is how Nigeria can only develop. Nigeria cannot develop with this centralized system of uh, power system function. So, the, the, so this, this time, what we should be doing should include metering all customers, making sure all customers are metered, coordinating the implementation of the Electricity Act, doing independent power plants, doing this Light Up Nigeria project, and joining the effort of Siemens project, the, which FGM Power Co. is actually pioneering by investing in the infrastructure of the Nigerian landscape. There are small, small things. I remember a feeder in Akute, in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. The Akute area has just little things that you need to do to the feeder to make power available. So there are certain things that will be possible when we decentralize. If we don't decentralize, they will not happen. The people in Akute will even go to Bank A if this little few um, uh, minor tweaks or things are done. So this also applies to several places in the country. Uh, all we have to do are minor things that will get us there. But knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Uh, it's unfortunate that time is not our best friend on the program. But having said that, you having mentioned the Akute, I was actually telling, I, I am championing a 200-unit estate with some of my friends. Start, I started a you know, cooperative in England. And, we are, and I told them I'm, I'm integrating power into it. And they were initially surprised. And I said, you know what? Ironically, look at Akute, the first major body of water that allowed the white people to enter southwest Nigeria, Ogun River, from the Lagos Lagoon here, to Ogun. And that water is still there now, literally being polluted at Kara by, by cow dung. He's, that is what we do now for even some of the assets with historic value to us. And ironically, Doc, look at the role of Kanji and River Niger, even in the extant power configuration that we have. And yet we have bodies of water littering our neighborhoods and we just live as though only NEPA, only PACN, only DISCO, only GEMCO. Thank you very much, sir. We look forward to having you on some other time. Thank you for the enlightenment opportunity. I've also learned a lot from, from you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wisdom, you need to wrap it up yes. in a way that engages the people you are here for. You are not here for me. <laughs> You know, the, the, the viewers. I, I, I would just, I would just, uh, thank you so much. I would just and add, this is your camera, I guess. <laughs> I would just add to say, um, I know the recent hike in tariff is tough, uh, but I want to say, I think the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission has shown um, um, some, some way of support you know, by providing required information. Um, I read just, just this evening, I saw an FAQ that they have published, you know, for more information on everything we need to know about the tariff. I want to, I want to, I mean, urge everyone to go and um, uh, read those FAQs and imbibe them. And also, they just placed a fine on one of the discos of 200 billion uh, for placing uh, the the tariff on all bands instead of just band A. So I see some monitoring happening, uh, which will give us some confidence, which is actually what we need. Equip yourself with more information about this. Uh, also, some numbers have been shared. Let's be able to engage them. So use social media also and make sure that if we are paying for this, we are getting it. If we are not getting it, we want some sanctions on those discos who may be in any way shortchanging us by not doing what they need for. So the citizens need to engage more. That's what I want to say because I know everywhere now there's so much concern 
uh, 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 on this increase in tariff. But um, let's see how that goes. But let's continue to engage NEC. It's just a message I want to pass to everybody. Without wanting to sound patronizing, <laughs> uh, if anybody was in doubt that your name <laughs> happens to be wisdom, <laughs> thank you very much for Thank for you so much, Bala. <laughs> really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is where we call it a wrap. We may soon be doing the historical uh, epilogue segment that we used to do on this program. Uh, given historical perspective to some of the some of the topics uh, that we engage with, I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.